I love great conversations. Hi, my name is Angel Jones. Thank you for joining me on 12 Minute Convos where I help you create a brand of your own unique real self. Listen in as I have conversations with amazing people from all over the world. Good night, good night, Dr. Seku Gavras. How are you going on this wonderful, beautiful night? Oh, doing well. Doing extremely well. Thank you for having me uh, all the way in uh, Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, this is really exciting, and I appreciate you having me on the show. Hey, it's a great pleasure to connect with you. What part of the world are you in right now? I'm in uh, New Jersey, so the northeast of the United States. Um, New Jersey, right next to New York. I live about uh, five miles from New York City. All right, all right. Well, it's a great pleasure to connect with you. I definitely would Absolutely. like to know uh, which of your talents do you think that you've been operating in is responsible for us connecting at this time in life? Uh, probably my podcast, The Truth Prescription, um, and the talent that I display on that on that podcast is the uh, talent for es- extracting truths out of people's lives and people's stories and trying to give give something to the people yeah. that they can take back home and uh, put in the blender, their own personal blenders of life, mix it up and, and get something positive out of it. Yeah, I loved um, reading. So I get to listen to a ton of podcasts, right? So, uh, oh, cool. And, um, you know, I liked the, what you had on your description for your podcast. And I don't usually mm. do this, but I'll definitely read it, right? Just for the audience. Okay, cool. The, the Truth Prescription is the podcast that explores how confronting the truth is the only way to take control of your life. Mm. Sekou gathers, interviews the world's most influential go-getters who have, triumphi- who have triumphed over trauma, rediscovered self-worth, and improved personal relationships by putting this concept into action. Mm-hmm. No fruitless new age mantras and no useless positive thinking techniques. The truth prescription <laughs> is the real breakthrough program to end self-denial and get the life you've always dreamed of. Pretty intriguing. Boom. <laughs> Boomerang. <laughs> that's right. Uh, that's, that's good. Right. That's good. So, who did you learn this, yeah. the skills uh, that were necessary to extract truth? Uh, who did I learn it from? I think uh, I learned it from this guy. His name is Life, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know he uh, he's uh, you know we've been in a in a tussle over the years. I'm I'm 41 years old, so you know since uh, I can remember, we've been in a tussle and. Um, I would, if I had to be more specific, I'd say uh, probably, I mean, it is Mr. Life, but also just um, my parents. You know, the the great thing about parents is um, they teach you two things. They teach you what what you're supposed to be, what you should be doing as a parent. They also teach you what you shouldn't be doing as a parent. (laughs) So, (laughs) you know, I think uh, I learned a lot from my experience uh, growing up. And um, there was a lot of uh, um, things that were kept from me. Uh, There was a lot of misinformation. And so uh, I was um, really at a very young age sort of uh, tasked with figuring out how to navigate things that people told me. And um, subsequently, as I got older, trying to navigate um, the lies or the misinformation I was even telling myself. So that's kind of. That's the short answer. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Thanks for the short answer. So, <laughs> I mean, definitely there have been the challenges, right? Um, Absolutely. Absolutely. I'd like to know. I'd like to know why will you continue to repeat the skill of um, of what is a quote unquote truth in tr- extraction? Well, um, why will I continue to do it? Because I think um, for me it's necessary. It's critical, and I think um, it, you really can't get anything done until you actually confront what is real. And once you do that, um, then the world opens up and you can actually move forward. But I just, from my own personal experience and. Um, What I've been able to tease out from a lot of my guests, it was really confronting those things that gave them the real breakthrough that allowed them to uh, move forward in whatever project or task or or thing they they wanted to be successful in. So, yeah. Yeah. Where's the best place for people to connect with what you do, your podcast? Uh, iTunes, SoundCloud. Stitcher. Yeah. (laughs) They can, they can, they can, they can find all all those, uh, all those platforms and then uh, the truth prescription.com. You know, every time we do a show, we upload it there. So you got four, four different avenues in which to, to, uh, get a dose, <laughs> get a, get a, get a sprinkle, you know, get a, get a little, a little injection of the, uh, 
of, of the truth. <laughs> well, what, say, saying that, right? Tell me one other thing yeah. that you've done consistently over the last three years. Uh, meditation. Ooh, what does that make you feel? Uh, it makes me feel calm. It makes me feel enlightened. And not enlightened like I'm Buddha, I'm floating away. But enlightened from the standpoint of being able to look at uh, people, places, things, and situations from a uh, uh, a different perspective you can co- kind of separate yourself from meditation allows you to separate yourself from your personality and try to look at things a little bit clearer so i uh i'm i'm a i'm an avid meditator and i recommend anybody to do it mm-hmm. the 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 we started by saying dr seku right uh, yes give us a yes. background of your doctorship if you would sure no problem um I, let me see, where can I start? Went to medical school in uh, 19, from 1998 to 2002 at the George Washington University in Washington, D.C. Um, I studied, after that, I went on to study emergency medicine at Mount Sinai, which is a hospital in New York City. And um, I finished that program up in 2006. And, um, you know, I've been practicing emergency medicine since then. Um, and, I, you know, I do a, do a few other things in medicine, but that's the... That, that's my major, uh, my primary specialty is uh, emergency medicine. And uh, I don't know what they call it in Trinidad, but I know like in London, they call it accident and emergency. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, you know, I, I essentially am responsible for taking care of um, young people, old people, children, pregnant women, um, anybody, but any essentially anybody that's alive. <laughs> if you have <laughs> yeah. an emergency, if you have, if you have an emergent problem. That's come intriguing. see Doctor G. I'll take care of it. Yeah, that's intriguing. Yeah, I come yeah. take care of it. Yeah. Do, do you do you give that um, great value for your insight? Uh, I mean, just being able to see any and everyone and what is required of you in terms of being versatile. That's, I mean, that's a good question. Um, I would say more, not necessarily what I do now, um, because remember it was. A, uh, you know, four years of college, four years of med school, four years of training. So that's 12 years before I got to, um, before I was licensed to actually take care of people. Um, I think it was more the train, my training process, um, you know, medical school, even, even college, but medical school is, um, was, was, a, was, a, was a serious challenge. And um, I had to confront a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, truths about myself. Uh, and about my future in order to um, get it past and get through. So I think um, my tra- my actual medical training helped me a lot. Um, I mean, basic stuff like, you know, I can jump up at, at 5.30 or, or 5 o'clock in the morning and think clearly and cogently because of my training of being in the hospital for hours and hours upon end with, with minimal sleep. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, almost like be- it's almost like being in the, in the Army or the Navy um, they really push you mentally and physically. And I really feel like they do it on purpose because they're really trying to get you almost to be, um, machine like, you know, mm. um, because if there's somebody that's ill and you're the only person in the hospital, nobody cares that you're tired. You, yeah. know, you have a, you have a job and a responsibility. So, mm. um, to, 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 to answer your question, I would say more so my, my training, the rigorous uh, medical training. Um, that forced me to look at um, certain aspects of myself and certain aspects of my life that maybe I was uncomfortable looking at previously, but I had no choice but to look at it because I was in a very adverse situation. So. Yeah. Pretty intriguing. Ooh, pretty intriguing. Yeah. So I could go for hours, I'll tell you. But yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> this is 12 minutes, though. 12 uh, minutes. So I'll, 12 I'll, minutes. I'll pop off. So, so, okay, so amazing audience. <laughs> Again, we are live with Dr. Seku Gathers. You can definitely check yes. out his podcast, uh, Truth Prescription, The Truth Prescription. Yeah. Um, That's right. That's yeah. right. So let's switch gears for a moment now, and let me invite sure. you into my time machine that is surrounded with okay. beautiful, warm, blue Caribbean water. Oh, beautiful. I love it. Seku, what is your earliest childhood memory? My earliest childhood memory. It's a good one. I don't remember a lot from my childhood, but I think uh, probably, oh, okay, I remember this one. Fourth grade, um, got a new pair of Nikes fresh out the box, and I was just feeling so fresh and so clean that day. (laughs) 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 I was just, I had a denim, denim jacket, denim, you know, jeans and these sneakers, and I was just feeling fresh. Yes, I remember that. Hmm. 
So how old were you in fourth grade? Fourth grade, I had to be, I guess, nine or ten, something like that. All right. Why do, yeah. you, why do you think nine this memory is so clear? I don't know. That's a good question. Um, I don't know. That, that it just I guess it was just something about um the day like it was a sunny day um I think school was was coming to a close and um the shoe these shoes were just so white I mean they were like whiter than white they were like whiter than than the whitest white you could think of <laughs> it was just, just the laces the laces were, were it was just I don't know I, I I I can't tell you why but I just felt really good that day with those fresh white Nikes straight out the box that's intriguing. <laughs> Well, can I offer an interpretation to the thought picture you created in my mind? Sure, sure, no problem. I love the idea of the conversation we just had for a short bit yeah. where you said, you know, you found truth um, about you, about about Dr. Seku, if you would, right? Well, mm-hmm, before mm-hmm, even sure. Dr. Seku was Dr. Seku. And I'm intrigued by the fact that the shoes made you feel so great, right? And mm-hmm, I'm yeah. guessing, I'm guessing that through life you've learned that... Uh, truly who you are is mm-hmm. greater than anything that you put on. Oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. That that is yeah, for sure. I mean, can't take it with you, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's it's really it's really about uh it's really about, you know, the call it the uh internal wealth that you're able to build. Yeah. Um, definitely. Love it. Definitely. If we fast forward to when you were 12 years old, what was your favorite song? My favorite song at 12 years old, let me see, is I was born in 76. Uh, I would make 12 years old, 1988. Uh, 88. Oh, I know what I was listening to. Kid and Play. Yeah. Kid and Play. Uh, Getting Funky. That was my song. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah. Well, you yeah. definitely yeah. have uh, definitely continued to get funky, right? <laughs> <laughs> that was my song, man. Didn't play. Yeah. Cool. yeah, I remember having my t shirt back to front. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, it was great. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, my friend. Well, we've arrived at our destination, but before we get off of this time machine, sure. there's a small declaration form. So it's yes or no, possibly a bit more. We're going to move pretty quickly here. Are you ready, Okay, Sheku? let's go. Let's go. Sheku, let's go. have let's you go. chosen someone to pass on your skills to? Yes. Are you married? Yes. Do you have children? Yes. How many? Three. Do you believe in God? Yes. Do you have an inner circle of friends? Yes. Do you watch TV for more than three hours a day? Hell no. How about three hours a week? Uh, ah, I would probably have to say hell no. All right. What about screen time, the phone under the computer? Is it more than eight or less than eight hours a day? Oh, way less than eight. All right. Seku, after 1,001 conversations in three months, in 2016, uh-huh. I came up with a workbook, the name of it being called Yours. It stands for your own unique real self. And the idea is you answer questions, and as as you go through the questions, hopefully you uncover your mission, if you would, a.k.a. Mm-hmm. your own unique real statement. If you mm-hmm. had to share with us your own unique real statement, a statement that represents Dr. Seku Gathers, what would you say that is? Mm-hmm. Uh, my statement would be people. You got one life to live, live it. Love it. Dr. Seku, this was a great <laughs> pleasure. Before you leave, is there you so anything? Much. Hey, yes. before you leave, though, is there anything else you'd like to share with our amazing audience? Uh, I would like to tell your amazing audience that the truth will set you free. Love it. If you let it. Love if it. you let it. I love it. Dr. Seku Gathers, <laughs> again, hey, thank you for being on what is inspired by 12 Minute Convos with Angel Jones. Thank you, Angel. Thank you for being on 12 Minute Convos with Angel Jones. Stay tuned for more from our advertisers. Diabetes is a mountain pandemic. It's a disease that's not acute, but chronic. Similar to this rhyming method, I have simplified the definition, the signs and symptoms, and the complications of diabetes for both adults and children in my books, Poems for Patients, A Focus on Diabetes, and The ABCs of Diabetes for Children. These books are available on Amazon.com, And for more information, you can visit my website, poemsbyag.com. That's poemsbyag.com.